Good, happy Tuesday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First step, man arrested in connection with attacks on two women. A man arrested as a fugitive from justice in Massachusetts is wanted in New Hampshire on two counts of attempted murder and attack on two women, police said. John Dinsmore, 54, of Fitzwilliam, was found at a family member's home in South Boston on Monday, police said he was being held pending an arrangement on the fugitive charge Monday afternoon. It was immediately known if he had lawyer. Police said the woman were attacked in a home in Fitzwilliam on June 5th and suffered serious injuries. State police issued an arrest warrant for Dinsmore. Surprise! Woman gives birth to baby girl on sidewalk. Let's take a listen to this video from WCVB News Center 5 in Boston. They're friends to Lamarill Ford. Because when you come in, you'll deal with one of us, and we'll personally make sure you get the best price. Like this 2017 Fusion with up to 46.50 in rebates, or zero percent for 72 months, plus up to 2,500 in rebates. Never seen nothing like it. Neighbors could not believe their eyes. I called the EMTs, 911. But imagine <coughs> the surprise for the parents who never saw this day coming. She's a shock. She's like, I didn't know, I didn't know neither, but she's in shock. Doug Rogers says his girlfriend Christine was in pain tonight, so bad that a friend was coming to take her to the hospital while Doug watched their other two kids. She usually doesn't go crazy over pain, but she was really hurting. So I called a friend of mine to come get her, and she sat out here, and I guess she walked over there, and the baby came. I thought it was your daughter's doll. I looked, I said, no, it's a baby, it's a baby. She was holding something real small, and it was a lot of blood. Neighbors in the building called 911, but Christine had already given birth on her own. The only evidence now is the wet sidewalk after firefighters hosed it down. I held up, there's some blood on me, that's her blood, and I held her, and I was just like, huh? But it's, it's gorgeous. Already, neighbors are offering hand-me-downs. Her first hat, because she wants to come out on a 90-degree day. To a family that had no time to prepare for what they now consider to be a miracle. She's doing good, and the baby's doing good. So I'm just, I'm blessed right now. <laughs> So somehow this family never saw this coming, but they are very happy tonight to welcome this baby girl into their family. We're live in Malden tonight, John Atwater, WCVB News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that report. Maine voters had two polls with local issues leading ballots. Maine voters are heading to the polls to determine the outcome of local issues as well as a state bond proposal about funding for technology. Local refundums and local elections are on ballots around the state. And Portland voters will be deciding on the school budget. And Berwick residents are deciding on a $37 million school budget and a proposal to build a new 
school. Augusta voters will decide for candidates for the city council and school board. Framingdale voters will are set to decide whether to ban retail marijuana business. Similar voters are scheduled all over Maine. The one statewide item is a $50 million bond issue that calls for the Maine Technology Institution to distribute $45 million in grant and upgrades in the industry, such as Adequator Maine Technology and Fostery. And if you live in the Maine area, please comment below and let us know what you think about all of this. If you're in one of those areas and you'll be voting, let us know. Comment below, and if we do not list your area, let us know what you guys are voting for in your community. The Tech Rec is a sign there could be a summer Swoon. The ugly sell-off in tech names is not necessarily an indication that the border market is about to crack, but there could be a summer swoon, analysts say. What to expect from Attorney General Jeff Sessions' testimony. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Show the Carfax. Only Carfax gives you the most accurate price based on a car's history. Thanks, buddy. Boom. Start your used car search and get free Carfax reports at Carfax.com. <coughs> President Trump's Attorney General Jeff Sessions will be in the hot seat tomorrow under oath. Likely asked about Russia, about James Comey, and about that meeting in the Oval Office. Did the President ask everyone to leave, including the Attorney General, everyone except for James Comey? Also tonight here, after our reporter asked President Trump, would you be willing to speak under oath to give your version of the events? The President said 100 percent. What the White House is saying tonight. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega leading us off. The cameras invited in today to witness President Trump's first full cabinet meeting, where he minced no words, declaring himself among the most productive presidents ever. Yes, and I think we've been about as active as you can possibly be. And then it was the cabinet's turn. One after the next, they went around the table, each lavishing praise on their boss as he nodded approvingly. Mr. President, we thank you for the opportunity and the blessing that you've given us to serve your agenda. I want to thank you for getting this country moving. You've set the exact right message, and it's being responded. The response is fabulous around the country. That last compliment from Attorney General Jeff Sessions. And tomorrow, all eyes will be on him when he testifies before the Senate Intelligence Committee investigating Russian meddling in the election and any possible collusion with Team Trump. Sessions will likely be asked about several issues raised in that blockbuster testimony of former FBI Director James Comey. For one, his role in that now infamous meeting in the Oval Office between Comey and the President. Comey says Trump asked Sessions and others to clear the room so they could be alone. My sense was the Attorney General knew uh, he shouldn't be leaving, which is why he was lingering. And so I knew something was about to happen that I needed to pay very close attention to. It was then that Comey says the president asked him to drop the investigation into former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn. After that meeting, Comey claims, I took the opportunity to implore the attorney general to prevent any future direct communication between the president and me. Sessions is also likely to be asked about his meetings with the Russians. He recused himself from the Russia investigation after reports that he met the Russian ambassador twice during the campaign, but failed to disclose those meetings in his Senate confirmation hearings. And Comey said, that's not all. We also were aware of facts that I can't discuss in an open setting that would make his continued engagement in a Russia-related investigation problematic. 
The White House today would not say whether Sessions would limit his testimony and invoke executive privilege. I think it, it, it depends on the scope of the questions, and it would be to get into a hypothetical at this point uh, would be premature. Tonight, the Trump White House is eager to turn the page. This week, Ivanka Trump will be in the spotlight talking job training. This morning on Fox News, she came to her father's defense. There is a level of viciousness that I was not expecting. I was not expecting the intensity of this experience, but this isn't supposed to be easy. And Cecilia Vega with us live tonight from the White House. And Cecilia, it was just Friday, as you know, that President Trump's exchange happened with our John Carl. John asking, would you be willing to speak under oath to offer the president's version of what happened with James Comey? Here's what the president said. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of 100 percent? I didn't say under oath. I hardly know the man. I'm not going to say I want you to pledge allegiance. Who would do that? Who would ask a man to pledge allegiance under oath? I mean, think of it. I hardly know the man. It doesn't make sense. No, I didn't say that, and I didn't say the other. So if Robert Mueller wanted to speak with you about that, you I would be, be glad to tell him exactly what I just told you, Jim. Cecilia, you were there today. The White House was asked, does that offer still stand? What was their answer? Well, he was asked whether, in fact, uh, when this testimony might happen, he hedged. This was Sean Spicer today right here in the briefing room. David, he said he's not had further discussions with the president about this potential testimony. A very different answer from this White House today than the very adamant President Trump we heard just a couple of days ago, David. Cecilia Vega back with us tonight. Good to have you back. Okay, and there you go on that report. And that did it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. See you back here later on today. Bye, everyone.